welcome back to Low Cell Life, and I should say uh, welcome back to myself because I've been gone for a little while. Uh, I my mom passed away, and so uh, it's been a very challenging month. And I appreciate all the kind um, comments and all the folks that have reached out um, when I said that I would need to take a little bit of a break. So I really appreciate that and it was just um, very nice to get the positive um, comments from you, so I appreciate that. Uh, I also am very grateful too for all the comments that uh, some new folks have been leaving behind uh, in the videos. It's always great. Uh, those go straight to my email so I see when they get posted and even though I wasn't able to reply to all of them yet, I do appreciate the comments and they did brighten my day. So. I appreciate that. And I said I would be back by Thanksgiving. So uh, today I have uh, <laughs> I really like to push it to the end. While I would like to post on Thanksgiving Day, uh, I know that I need to give you guys a little heads up because today we're making a, a new dish for me and I'm kind of trying to kind of fill that need for sweet potatoes. And I came across a recipe, so we're going to talk about that. We're gonna make it two different ways and I'm gonna offer some different variations. So uh, the first thing is we're gonna cook um, just basic potatoes with pears. Uh, it's not a normal combination. And so, you know, for me, when I saw that that was an option, I was like, ah, aha, you know, uh, that sounds like it would be good. I mean, who doesn't like sweet potatoes or yams? And those are basically like sweet versions of potatoes. So uh, there, we can certainly do it by combining these and you know if you don't have pears and you can tolerate like a golden delicious apple that's peeled that might be an option too so uh, I just I don't eat apples and uh, it's just something I'm not willing to try yet so um, what I want to do is first of all find my notes <laughs> So uh, the first thing is that I came across this article, uh, this recipe, and uh, it's, it's salicylatesensitivity.com. It was a, it's a good website. It's just uh, it hasn't been updated in a very long time. I think the last post or update I saw was 2011. Uh, so this recipe uh, is from the cookbook there, and it's basically um, five uh, russet potatoes. Uh, I think they're called brown potatoes possibly in Australia or other places, but uh, this is your good Idaho spud. Or if you live near Grant County, uh, good old Washington russet potato. So uh, anyway, so five of those two pears uh, that we'll be peeling. Um, uh, Bartlett has lowest tested salicylate level, so, and it's one of the best pears, I think. And so uh, we're gonna uh, do two of these. Uh, these aren't perfectly ripe, like super ripe. They're just a little underripe, and uh, I did that intentionally. Uh, and then the recipe also calls for a little bit of canola oil to, once you peel and chop them, you um, toss them in canola oil. Canola or sunflower oil are both safe oils. Uh, rice bran oil is also low in salicylates. I personally prefer animal fats, and I, uh, you know, it's personal preference. I just feel, uh, I personally feel healthier when I use animal fats. So I'm gonna use good old fashioned uh, butter. I like the Kerrygold uh, Irish butter. I think that's one of the, I've become a butter snob. That's what I realized. Uh, anyway, that I think is the best bar butter on the market. And I'm sorry, local farmers, uh, they're still the best. <laughs> so I've tried lots of different kinds. And then, uh, so the recipe says to, you know, uh, toss them in oil and then bake them and then uh, keep an eye on them and flip them periodically like every 15 minutes so that it browns on all the sides and then you could top it with parsley now uh, first of all I don't like parsley second parsley used to be low in salicylates but it's tested higher but then by dose it's probably okay for most people to eat it anyway on a low salicylate diet so um, that's one way that you could top it uh, I'm just gonna do that one and not top it with anything. Uh, just do that. Um, and then I'm actually gonna split the recipe in half just because I want to try 
kind of like a sweet potato mash with the marshmallows on top. And yeah, there's a few reasons why I want to do that. One is uh, my Thanksgivings included rice and beans. Like we did not have sweet potatoes with marshmallows on top. Uh, not until uh, we started marrying other people <laughs> from uh, the Northern Hemisphere uh, did uh, any dishes like that ever show up, but they are fun. And so while those were introduced to me, you know, in my 20s, uh, you know, in my 30s, I'm no longer allowed to eat sweet potatoes and so, uh, and some of those types of dishes. So there's a part of me that's like, oh, but I got so close to having those and then now I can't. So this is kind of a substitute for me. Um, so I'm gonna take half those, half the roasted pears and potatoes. I'm gonna end up mashing them up and, um, I'm gonna add some brown sugar and, oh, uh, real quick on sugar. Uh, you can use any kind of sweetener. I'm gonna use brown sugar. Um, it's been said that brown sugar has a little bit higher levels. Um, our pasta said that there's really not any difference between white and brown sugar, that they should both be fine, but everybody's different. Uh, I recommend cane sugar over beet sugar. Uh, beet sugar is a little bit of a cheaper product and I know that they add sulfites, so sometimes people react to those. Beets are also a little bit higher in salicylates and sugarcane, so just something to think about. Uh, I've never had an issue with plain sugar. Other sweeteners you can use, obviously you can use white sugar, and then you could also use uh, maple syrup if you want a natural uh, sweetener. Uh, when I do the mash, I'm gonna use a little bit of cream because it's Thanksgiving. Uh, I think if I did this on a, if I mashed this, in, for like a daily type, like a weekly dish. Uh, I would probably maybe use but, uh, milk, but it's Thanksgiving. And then of course, I'm gonna mash it with a little tiny bit of butter. And then I am going to top it with marshmallows. Uh, okay. The ingredients in marshmallows are not very good. They're not very good for you, but they are, pretty low in salicylates and it's Thanksgiving and sometimes people just want to be grown-up kids. So, uh, out of all the ingredients in here, corn syrup, sugar, corn starch, dextrose, water, all of those should be fine. Gelatin should be fine. Uh, less than 2% of, and then it's got, you know, tetrasodium pyrophosphate uh, and then natural and artificial flavor and blue dye one. So not, not the best, but uh, if I have just a few marshmallows, I never have a reaction. Uh, I maybe eat marshmallows like twice a year, like at a campfire and then maybe around Thanksgiving. So, uh, you know, you gotta weigh your pros and cons. And this year I'm going for, let's see, I've got no company this year. Uh, it's been a really bad month. So I'm gonna go with nostalgia for this, for this Thanksgiving. And just to save you <laughs> some of the trouble, um, marshmallows are listed as low, the white ones are listed as low and by ARPA, the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital. And then uh, Fed Up also says that the vanilla Pascal um, marshmallows in Australia are also uh, low in salicylate. So uh, save you the trouble there. But I don't recommend eating too many of them, but let's get started. <laughs> So the first thing I'm gonna do is peel the potatoes and the pears, chop them up and toss them in, I'm gonna use butter, but again, you can use canola oil and roast them at 350 degrees in the oven for about 45 minutes to an hour until they are done.
we're done with the first part, or the entire dish really, if we want to be done, we can be done. So potatoes, uh, it, it took a really long time, probably about an hour and 10 minutes, and I ended up bumping it up to 375 degrees just because I really want to go to bed today. So uh, just something to think about. I kind of wish hindsight that I would have covered it with foil just to let a little bit of steam uh, inside build up so that it could cook a little bit faster, but it's good how it is. Now, the second part that we're going to do is actually mash. Uh, I'm gonna save half of it as just roasted cubed potatoes and pears. And then I'm going to take the other half and mash them. Uh, I did notice that on some sweet potato mashed recipes with like the candied yams or sweet potatoes that they would um, boil it. So you can certainly boil it, uh, boil the potatoes so that they, like as if you were gonna do mashed potatoes, so you could do that. Uh, I'd recommend putting in the pears like only for like three or four minutes maybe at the end because those cook really fast. And even with the sweet potato and yam recipes, they actually recommend that you put them in the oven so that the water can evaporate off of them. So you're actually working with dry, drier potatoes so they're not runny from water. So that's something to think about. Uh, I've made gnocchi before and some other like mashed up type dishes before and they always turn out better if you actually roast them. So that's why I thought it'd be a good idea, since I'm already roasting this, to actually do it with half the batch and try it out that way. So uh, you've got a couple different options is what I'm saying, which, you know, for salicylate sensitivity, options are not really always available. So uh, let's just, you know, get fancy with all of our different options and explore, explore the world. Oh, speaking of, uh, I did write down a couple of thoughts that I thought would be really good with, uh, I, I looked up pear and potato and kind of saw like what some of the options were. So one of the things that I had found was a roasted pear and potato salad. Uh, I'm guessing that's like a put cold potato salad but with roasted pears in it, but I thought that that would be really tasty. So we'll have to try that out maybe, you know, spring or summer, give that a try. Um, I saw a roast, um, a potato and pear cream soup, or kind of like a chowder. So I've had sweet potato soup in the past, a long time ago. Uh, this kind of, you know, just creamy, like a potato leek soup or something like that. So I could see that being good, both creamy and then also maybe chunky, like a corn chowder. Uh, that Like a, I used to eat a potato corn chowder. So I can imagine that being like a potato chowder with pears, so that might be an option. That might be pretty tasty. Um, this um, flavor combo you could also do with like a gratin. So I thought about maybe slicing the potatoes. So they were, you know, thin slices of potato, put in like a cream sauce in there. I saw uh, two options for a potato gratins and with pears. And I saw Swiss cheese as a viable option or blue cheese. The blue cheese isn't salicylate free. It does have a little bit of salicylate, but it is, it's less than what cabbage has in it. So, um, just, you know, just kind of be careful if you're trying it out new, but I would imagine that that sweet and that just that funky blue cheese taste would be really actually quite tasty. Uh, kind of like, um, blue cheese wedge salad, you know, with like, you know, blue cheese and like some pear on there kind of, that would taste really good. Anyway, uh, and then for meat options to add with them or serve with it, I would imagine that ham would be really tasty with it. Usually um, ham with apple or pear tastes really well. Um, if you have kind of an unseasoned sausage, that would also be pretty tasty. Uh, but the one that really caught my attention was a prosciutto uh, or um, even some bacon. Like if you did like bacon with blue cheese, pear and potato, that would be so good. So just some different options. Like you can, uh, we're just doing the basics here. So, uh, but you can get pretty fancy if you want to be. So uh, just some options. Okay, now we're going to mash up half this recipe. I'm gonna put it in the blender, add some brown sugar, a little tiny bit of butter just to add, because they're pretty dry right now, right? Because they've been in the oven for an hour and 10 minutes. So I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of butter and cream in them just to 
get it so it blends. You don't have to follow my exact recipe. Uh, right now, I'm not even completely positive how much I'm going to put in there, <laughs> so I'll let you know after the fact. Uh, so, and then we're going to blend it, put it in a dish, uh, cover it with some marshmallows, and then put it in the oven. So, we'll catch up with you in just a moment. final recipe so this was for half the batch so if you do a full five pound um, you know two pears five potatoes you want to double what I put in here because I only made half batch so I put in um, three tablespoons of butter uh, I put in three tablespoons of cream but because the potatoes were so dry because they weren't like a normal boil and mash uh, I decided that I would add milk to it just because it needed a lot more fluid. So I put in three quarter cup of milk. So if you don't have cream, you could just do three quarter to one cup of milk and that would probably be plenty. Then I added uh, three tablespoons of brown sugar and it tastes so good. And not like a really sugary good, but it tastes like kind of like sweet potatoes. So I'm really excited about that. So we're gonna dish it up. Uh, put it in a baking dish. I recommend putting this in like a pie plate uh, so you know it looks pretty for Thanksgiving or like a special dinner but um, because I only did a half batch I'm only going to do it in a smaller baking like loaf dish so uh, that's what we're going to do and then I'm going to top it with marshmallows throw it in the oven. I've got the oven set at 400 degrees Fahrenheit so I'm going to cook it probably like 10 minutes in there and then you know just to make sure that it's hot like it, uh, the temperature's cooled down a little bit adding the milk and being out of the oven so we're going to bring the temperature back up if the marshmallow topping isn't brown by the end of it then uh, you can broil for one minute keep a really close eye on it so you don't scald it and, or burn the top you just got to find that sweet spot spot just like with the s'mores moment of truth. I'm very excited about this. I'm also very hungry so uh, it, I didn't have to broil it. The marshmallows toasted on their own so that was good and I have to say uh, I really like the way that the the mash turned out. The roasted potatoes, the cubed portions, they were good except you'd get kind of like a savory normal potato and then a bite of pear. So it was really switching on and off. But this here, the mash with the milk and the brown sugar in it certainly ties it all together. It tastes really good and very, very much like a sweet potato. Mm. Yeah, that's good. I like the crunch on the marshmallow. Anyway, this turned out delicious. I recommend it. And thank you so much for being here, um, sticking through the whole thing. I hope that you feel a little bit inspired, not only with these two dishes that I made today, but with some of the other ideas that you can kind of mix everything up. With just two ingredients, you can do a lot. Um, you can think about a lot of different ways to prepare some food. So 
If, I, if you're interested, you can follow me on Instagram or on Facebook at, at Low Style Life. And I will see you not quite next week. I've got one kind of midweek that I'm planning uh, for the weekend. And it's going to be how I prep my chayote. So as many of you guys know, I live in a rural area. So getting access to exotic fruits and veggies is kind of challenging. Uh, they do not carry chayote. <laughs> They don't even carry bean sprouts in my grocery store that's you know within a five minute drive of my house but other than that i have to go over an hour to get to a local grocery a big grocery store so or or any like mexican tiendas or any specialty stores so i usually buy in bulk so uh, on the next video i'll be showing you how i prep my chayote and then also talk about maybe some recipes that i might plan on making on this winter that are different than what i've been preparing um, for the warmer months so i hope you have a great thanksgiving and i will see you soon thanks bye